Okay. okay. All right, so I will call to order the Communications Committee meeting. Today is November 4th, 2022, and the time is 9.06 a.m. First order of business we have is uh, approval of our October meeting minutes. So if I can get a motion, I guess actually, Sharon, since it's just you and I. I'm moving. Okay. <laughs> We're in. Uh, and I will, uh, so Sharon, move that the Communications Committee approve the October yes. meeting minutes. Yes. I second. All in favor? All right. There we go. It's unanimous. Rolling. Okay. Drum roll. Dan, you are up for website migration update. Great, so we have finished the thematics of the website and the company is going to begin transferring the information over. We're gonna awesome. be taking it slowly but surely because there's a lot of antiquated information on the website. So every time they hit a bump, they're gonna reach out to me and say, hey, do we need this or do we get rid of it? We're also going to be consolidating and fixing the horizontal navigation bar on our website. Uh, I don't like how our current website is set up. Uh, let me do a quick screen share. Um, I, I don't like how our current website has technically two home pages, right? So it has the main home page mm -hmm. right here. Hold on one second, where you've got district, DOE, schools, prospective residents. And then you also have a, another homepage under district. So we're going to be combining those two. Like technically, district should be the homepage, right? Mm -hmm. But there's still information on the other homepage that we also need to include on the new homepage. So I just put together a, a quick hierarchy to show everybody this is what the new horizontal navigation bar is going to include so you're going to it's going to start with schools you have Hess, west middle school high school district information and in, in, info it's the same thing as about mm -hmm. like the term district. <coughs> so then you have underneath here things about west public schools superintendent assistant superintendent staff list stuff like that and departments <clears throat> so we'll, we're going to split it out uh we're going to have departments business services culinary services pupil personnel technology we're going to add one uh for nurse and health services uh because i feel like that should be on the district page and then each individual school will also have their own nurse and health services page then under curriculum and instruction and this this piece specifically is going to be a work in progress i've been working with uh, tina henkel on this you know, we're going to have our district-wide programs, the library learning commons, uh, visual and performing arts, specifically because visual and performing arts is a K-12 spanning uh, department. We're also uh, most likely going to have one for math, for ELA, for science, for social studies, kind of district overviews of those departments. And then when you get to the building level, there will also be building level information on you know, math or social studies or ELA. And then under Board of Education, meetings, board members, committees, budget, and policies. One of the things we're going to see is double linking of certain shortcuts, meaning, for instance, budget. Budget will reside under Board of Education. However, we will also put the same link for budget under business services as well. I'm trying to think of, and it's going to be one page to update. It's not going to be multiple pages. It's just one link to the same page. I'm trying to think of as the resident, some residents may look under, well, it should be under finance. Some residents may think it's going to be under board of education. So why not both? So this is the uh, work in progress. Obviously, there may be some changes uh, to the horizontal navigation menu, uh, but this is obviously one of the most important pieces of the website. So I just wanted to bring it up today to, to you for feedback and to let me know your thoughts uh, as we continue the migration progress process. Sorry. 
Dan, can you scroll down on uh, Board of Education? Yep. Will there be a, uh, or there should be a link to our live meeting since that tends to be static? Or will that be just underneath? Will, will it have meetings and then have, are you saying we should separate them out? Because well, I was thinking, I think, I think if you click on meetings, then there could be a live meeting or a, um, assuming a link to all of our recorded meetings, right? Right, right. Yeah. So right now, uh, hold on, let me. Although, you know what, David's point is actually a very valid point. The less right. effects, I'm just better. Thinking, when someone is the last minute looking for something, yeah. I want to see live meetings, but I don't see calendar. So I feel like the word meetings should be live meetings or calendar, and there should be a separate item for, there should be live meetings. So somebody, 6.59 or 5.59, they want to jump on our live meeting. They're going to, it needs to jump out at them. So we can do that, but also when you have the district calendar, it should be on the district calendar too. Yes, and the district so, calendar does reside, uh, it's gonna reside on our homepage. Right. So when, when I talk, what I did not include is the second level of links. So under meetings for Board of Education, you have regular minutes, BOE meeting calendar, meeting minutes archive, updates and postings, procedures and guidelines for public participation. Are you saying you wanted me to add live meeting under meetings or make it uh, an entire, entirely new link? Like, would you want it nested? I think, no, I'm thinking, I, gotcha. I, I think a live, if you have meetings there, originally I was thinking have it um, just as an extra point here under the Board of Ed. But I think if once you click on meetings, then to have to have to have a link that says meetings and another link that says live meetings is a little confusing. So if you click on meetings, I think there should just be a link that takes you to the live meeting. My That's feeling, it. yeah. So my feeling is there should be calendar. Like I'm thinking like instinctively words that people are going to look for. So under Board of Education, and it would potentially link to the same calendar. I think I did see a calendar, a district calendar, right? So uh, I know it's repetitive, but it goes to the point, Dan, that you brought up that there. The same link might appear under multiple places. Yep. So I think under Board of Education, there should be a district calendar or calendar or BOE meeting calendar, right? Because it goes to the same place. It just has a different name. Yep. And then I think meetings should be, I think we should have the word live meetings and potentially archived meetings. I know it adds more items to the menu, but again, I'm just thinking it can go to the same place. But from a navigation perspective, right, get, get what people want quick, especially things like, I just want to know how to get on this live meeting. Yep. Okay. So the live meetings would be a redirect to our YouTube live uh, page. YouTube live, or are we going to give them a, will there be a, a Zoom link? Because I thought we were going to do the live meetings. I thought. Well, so the Zoom link is not static, though. Okay. So the Zoom link is going to change with every meeting. Okay. So that can that live in the calendar? That will re always reside in the calendar. The Zoom okay. connection information will always reside in the calendar. Um, the archive meetings would redirect to our YouTube li library. Instead of with well, so then when we have the live meetings, if somebody clicks on the live meetings, how about if it takes them to the calendar? So they can click on the Zoom link because we're trying to use utilize Zoom, correct? As opposed to having them do it on YouTube Live. Well, it's either or. So it's Zoom for public comment, or if people would just want to watch it through Zoom. But we didn't want to remove the YouTube because people are used to using YouTube. So okay, I just, in both areas. I would like to have a Zoom link available because the person who's typically the most frustrated is the person who is wants to have a comment and wants to be heard or say something. And so having um, finding a way to make the Zoom link readily available, I think it'd be great. Plus, I mean, we also talked about how it, and you know, the experience, the meeting experience is better on Zoom when it's, it's when it's a hybrid, um, yeah. the meeting experience is better on Zoom. So let's, you know, let's make sure that we get the best experience for the user that we can. Absolutely. So the, way, the way this works is, um, when we get closer to the board of ed meetings you'll see so like for instance if we look at our agenda this is on our current website see it says link to google meet mm -hmm. so it would be the same thing in the calendar it would just say link to zoom okay 
All right. Yeah, and can I, um, I think the answer is no, but I'll ask anyway, and it sort of just dovetails on what um, Sharon's asking about, and yeah. I just went to our YouTube page. Yeah. Can you do anything on that first landing page uh, for the WPS BOE meetings where you can put some text in there to let people know that if you want to, if, uh, you'd have to abbreviate the wording, but in so, in so many words, if you are, uh, look, if you want to, um, attend a live meeting and provide public comment, uh, join us on Zoom. Or I mean, right. please refer to this calendar for the Zoom right. connection information or something like right. that. Yeah. Yeah, I can absolutely add that on, under like the description or about. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm just thinking that because I think the, the vast, uh, we don't want to have live meeting view on, uh, two links, right? Live meeting view only, live meeting participate. Right. So if we can just let people know if they wind up at YouTube, but they want to participate in the live meeting, um, another link. But my, my thought would be for people who want to participate in the live meeting, they probably looked at the agenda because there's something on the agenda that they want to speak to. Yep. And so just to kind of give people both options. Sure. Okay. Sure. No problem. Any other feedback? Go back to this tab. And again, this is a work in progress, so things may change. I was just, I was just looking at our current website. Um, oh, were you able to make any progress on the ability to download a calendar appointment as an ICS? I brought that up to them, and they said that they will get back to me. But I have not heard anything from them. Like, the, uh, nothing... Currently, right? I, I can't figure out how to do that in WordPress right now uh, or Google Calendar right now. However, I'll be working with Gabbert to see if we can find some kind of a solution for that. All right. And that's basically it for me. That's it for all the updates. I put all the stuff on Facebook. I'll, if you see, it actually rolls up onto our main page. You see how I put like the November meeting schedule mm -hmm. um, and an automatic uh, firing off of a scheduled post uh, 24 hours before the meetings. So that's getting out there and we are getting a good amount of engagement. Uh, so that's a nice little reminder for people uh, when the board of meeting, when the board meetings are, and then as we get closer to them, what the connection information is and what the agenda items are. So I think that that's been working out very well. Great. Great. And that is it for me. I have a quick question, Dan, before, we, before you go. Yeah. Um, and this is, uh, I, I'm part of the, um, the board representative to Western Educational Foundation. And they were talking the other day about um, some of the projects that they've done and the status and things like that. One of the things that came up was the auditorium at the high school. Do you oversee that? I know that when we talked a lot about the meetings in the middle school, you're talking about, you know, what we had there and you um, were referencing things in the high school as well. Are you the person who oversees that? And no, who's the person I should talk to about that? So, well, y yes, and yes and no. So really, uh, I can help from a technical perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that the auditorium has its fair share of issues from a technical standpoint for like presenting, but uh, why don't you give me a little bit more information on what, what. The so uh, they were, they were talking about projects that um, like I said, projects that they've done in the past, but also projects moving forward where there might be um, needs. And I think someone had brought um, to the foundation, I think a parent had brought to the foundation that there might be some needs um, in the theater. So I was like, not that I'm aware of, but, you know, at the same time, I don't want to poo-poo it. Let me do some investigating and find out what our what our needs are as far as the theater is concerned, if it's a technical thing or or what. So I thought I would just start by asking you if, A, you're the person. If not, at least I'm seeing, you're, I'm seeing some of no, this. No, so. I guess I, I'm, I'm sort of semi-laughing because the theater will always tell you that there are needs and they will always want a lot okay. of uh, funding. And there was an issue last spring, for example, where all of a sudden we were faced with we need this fixed or it's a safety 
issue, which prompted us to get it fixed. And, and I know it was talked about at the finance committee. Um, so it, it's a little bit complicated because Liz Morris does oversee a lot of the theater and, and some of that. And we're working on a plan to be able to understand what are the needs moving forward. Okay. But what I would say right now is, is that they should, um, there are also some different things um, going on. You know, you have Western Education Foundation, you have Western Arts. I don't know if you're aware, but there is a group that's starting a, a school boosters club specifically for theater. These are yeah. parents in the community. So I think there's still some moving targets and I think we have to take our lead from uh, Phil and Mike Del Mastro working with them on what are the capital projects because okay. there's been significant money put into that. Last yeah. spring, we had to put in different things. I forget what it was. Um, several years ago, the um, Western Gun Club bought the entire um, lighting, it was either the lighting or the soundboard. They bought a whole big new system that they donated. Wow. So, um, there's been money put into it. It's just, yeah, they. <laughs> okay. No, I that's I, I told her that I would kind of take the temperature and get back to her and let her know what's going on. So I will Yeah, I think some things have to shake out with that, quite frankly. Okay. Um across the board so that and then perhaps the appropriate group we look for philanthropic money from the appropriate group and maybe it's more Western arts than the foundation. I don't know, but I, right. I also don't wanna um I don't want anyone to think that oh my god, we need a lot of money because we don't. Okay. All right. Nope. That's that's exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah. And if it was something yeah. like uh, the only thing what I would be in charge of for the auditorium is like the long throw projector, things right. like that. You know, things things like that, but not like the lighting or the audio. Yeah. That's that that that's not my domain. Who whose domain is that? Or well, is basically, it, it comes out of the facilities with Mike Del Mastro yeah. and and Phil, yeah. and they also work with. Liz Morris, um, they will be bring in the people to let's say do an inspection and okay. see what we need and all that all that stuff. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's also that um, you know you, you could talk to athletics and hear about all of they what they need too. You know, like without a know, doubt, without a doubt. Just, so yeah. um, I appreciate you raising it, but but just let them know that that we are working through some things and that it's there are other things, quite frankly, that are in need. Also, so we that have was to, my thought process. Yeah, figure here. it so, out. Um, yeah. what to do. I think that um, it should shake out. Quite frankly, over the course of this year. Yeah. All right. No, I I, I was in that camp, but at the same time, I didn't uh, not no, know. You want to do your due diligence. Yeah. You yeah. know. So. Um, yeah. All right. Perfect. So that's it. You're muted, David. David, we can't hear you. But I do have a question, and I know it's not on the agenda, but can I just ask the question? Because Tina asked it, and it came up yesterday. Um, so, you know, I think the Instagram is very well received. We do a lot of, uh, I think people like the Instagram. You know, even when I'm going around, kids, oh, take my picture and put it on the Instagram, oh, which reminds me, they did wind turbines yesterday in the intermediate school. I have to get the picture <laughs> Um, the, the district updates that we write, you know, and we send them, you know, the, the cover page from the district and then all the schools together. Is there a positive feeling about that? I guess I would say, or are you not, you know, sometimes no news is good news. Um, are people reading them? Do they appreciate them? Cause there's a lot, it's a lot of time that it takes to put them together. Um, and I think we should keep doing them and then but then i'm thinking or is it that we do like one for each school and put the cover page of the district on each one is it when somebody gets it and they're you know in one school but i would think they'd want to read about all the schools maybe they don't do you do you have any sense of any pulse in the community about it my only sense about it is i think that people just read about their own school sadly but i do think that which they, is because, fine i mean yeah you get a lot of information sent to you um, uh, you know, on a daily basis. So I think what they do is they go, oh, well, my kid is at WIS in the middle school. So I'm going to read those too. Um, and if I have time, I could read the others. But I think that my, my gut tells me that. But at the same time, don't we have the ability to find out how many people actually open it and read it? Do we have that as part of our yeah, email? I, that would be a Dan question. I don't yeah. <laughs> believe so. I'm Dan, can sure. we have, because usually it's, I receive mine typically as an attachment. And then I have to click on the link to go to the attachment. So do we have any statistics that can show us? Because I, I, I personally really like it. I think it's nice. Um, 
every week. You kind of see what's going on. It helps me to know that, you know, my son is either participating or not participating, you know, um, and I can kind of get a temperature as to where he is based upon those emails. But maybe I'm a, I don't know, David, are you reading yours on a, on a and be honest. <laughs> reading my what? No. Yeah. Um, I mean, my feeling on it is the, the, and I might be wrong, but from someone who consumes it as a parent of two students, not as a board of ed member, uh, to me, the district update is just that. It's a district wide update. Mm -hmm. And I do scroll through it. <clears throat> Obviously, being on the board of ed, some of it I'm already aware of. But mm -hmm. um, I do scroll through the district update, which I find helpful from a yep. district perspective. Um, at the school level, the school level, then, uh, you know, I have a son in a high school. I don't believe they send anything out, but I have my little guys at Hurlbut. Uh, I do get something from Hurlbut, um, more school related, which I find also helpful. And then his, my second graders teacher actually sends out a little newsletter every Sunday night. Yeah. So, yeah. Because what I think is happening, and I'm sorry to comment you this, this, this meeting and, uh, about this, Dan, I feel like you're sliding under the weather, and I'm prolonging it. Um, okay. So we have we have the district update that goes out monthly, and attached to that is every school update, monthly. Then, at the high school, they send out the week ahead every Sunday. Um, it's my understanding at the elementary schools, pretty much the teachers send out something weekly blurbs to their. Uh, par the parent teachers is that that's all accurate correct and the one thing we're working on beefing up is at the middle school they have a they have team pages and we need it to be more prominent on the website and it's not just shouldn't just be about homework it should be about events and things like that to make i'm just want to make sure that parents know that there are mul multiple ways to be able to get information because the, the monthly updates are kind of like, here's a summary of everything that happened over the course of the month. And I think it's great. I would scroll through and I'd probably just read where my child is. But I'm hoping there's enough communication at the school level where people, you're, you know, are feeling that they know what's going on. I mean, my feeling on it is, uh, depending on um, you know, bandwidth that each school has, I think the district update on a monthly basis is good, and that should be kind of high level top down coming from you know your office, so to speak, right? which I believe is where it comes from. The, the schools should drill down on more of the uh, school specific. Um, I tend to get that sometimes from the PTO. I feel like, uh, I mean, I personally think the communication is good. Like, I feel as a parent well connected between district update, the school update, okay, okay. and the teacher. But, okay. if, but if, I, yeah, I think the district update should just be more about the district as a whole, or the focus would be district as a whole. And then it, it, I don't know how important it is for you to summarize what's happening in the schools. If that's taking a lot of, if that's taking effort. It's not, it's not, I don't think it takes a lot of effort. I guess I just want to make sure that people value it. You know, I think they do. Um, Communication is key. It really is. And I think at least once a month, Lisa, for them to hear from you, I think is important, right? Yeah, at least I, once a month. I think that's important. And I do think it's important to highlight in any way possible all the good things that are going on at the schools. Absolutely. Um, kind of summarizing the month. I do think, okay, well, this is helpful. I think the, I think that that's great. Um, as we all know, the older the kids get, the less communication we're going to need. There's you know, less handholding. So uh, exactly. there's no teacher yeah. emails. So those the the uh, Sunday evening, Megan's Sunday evening, what's happening this week at Weston High School? Love it that because that sets helpful. me up. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback about that. Yeah, because you're so right, I, Sharon. You don't hear like your kids. Okay. Talk. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So my only item is just to recap our in-person meeting in November, just to make sure that um, we have everything lined up as far as what we've promised the public, not the actual agenda, just from a tech perspective, because I've gotten a couple of emails, um, such as, are we meeting in person? Yes, we are. Um, and uh, Dan, just to kind of validate or verify what I know about the meeting, it's going it, for, for in-person meetings, we are going to simultaneously stream it to uh, YouTube. YouTube. Um, yes. Will in person, I think the answer is no, but I'll ask it. 
Will in-person meetings also be on Zoom? No. Okay. So the concept of the in-person meetings is uh, folks that want to participate, have public comment, they will come into the middle school library, meet with us. Yes. Uh, can, that's the way they're going to consume it in person. Yes. People who only want to view it will view it through YouTube. Uh, there is no interaction between the YouTube, between remote and uh, being in person. So if you want to participate, uh, you have to be there in person. Correct. Um, and what was the outcome with two things? The items that get shown on the projector, is that going to be live fed or is that going to be a camera looking at the projector? Lisa, you. One of the items is going to be on the agenda. Look, let me get my book so I can go through what the agenda has on it. Um, so to, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, one, one of the big items the the key thing that we are doing for that update is the statistical report and that is the report that um is presented about college acceptances ap sat all of that and um there last year the uh, dr Craw changed the format it was a little bit more streamlined we are actually going back to the prior version that I think had more detail in um, the actual report. So the plan is, is to get the report. It's, it's a uh, dense report. So the plan is, is to, you know, upload the report and have Meredith Starzik presents Tina Henkel and Megan Ward to have them reference what well, everybody will have. And we will have hard copies at the meeting to reference the report, because when you put it up on a screen, even if you do it on Zoom and, you know, you're looking at like numbers of AP classes and scores, it's easier, it's easier to reference the hard copy. So our thought was to make sure that it was posted in plenty of times that people, you know, meeting the requirements, have the hard copy in front of them. And when we go through it, that is what they are going to reference is the hard copy, you know, um, and go through the pages. I think the report usually is about 20 pages. I think putting it up on the screen, those 20 pages and charts would be extremely difficult in both settings, quite frankly. So um, long story short, the, the plan is, is not to use as much technical posting and have it in hard copy. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think my question, which um, is more on the, uh, 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 the technical side of, so people who are, so the report is going to be uh, part of the agenda, right? So people. Yeah, it's uploaded, yeah. Okay. So prior to the meeting, people can look at the report mm -hmm. and have a hard copy of the report. For the purposes of the live stream, uh, the, the technical question is, will, the pro will what's being presented on the projector be fed to YouTube or will there be the camera looking at the projector? So it's right now, it's the camera. Looking at the projector, we did get a quote to have direct feed, um, but I do need to speak to Phil about that because it's not cheap. I mean, it's not overly expensive. It's not $20,000, but there's uh, an unanticipated cost to get the projector as an input feed into the TriCaster. So as of right now, it will be a project, a, a camera looking at the projector. Okay. Right. Which is kind of what we had anticipated, which is kind of one of the reasons why we have gone into the hybrid mode is so the experience was better without having to spend a like a, a large sum of money, taking it away from the kids to put it towards a projector for something that Zoom is. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. Can I clarify? Maybe I'm not very tech savvy. I, and I just want to make sure that that I understand. So. There is not going to be, though, a electronic presentation of this report. It will be referenced only on hard copy. She doesn't have an electronic presentation to put up on the screen behind her when she's talking? We didn't because it's all of those very detailed charts. That are very difficult to look at. All right. So maybe yeah, that's where I want to make sure, sure that we're clear. Like, I guess you could turn them, you know, each page into one, but it's very dense. You know, yeah. when you look at, like, for example, you're listing colleges and you're putting up a list of the most highly competitive colleges, that's in the report. Right. How would you, you know, present a list of 
40 colleges on a projector. You, you know, it's, you can do it, but I don't know what the value of doing that is. Yeah. Right. I think I, with the AP scores, you're listing like 25 AP courses. You're listing all of the um, scores that kids get, the breakdown from one to five. And, you know, it's on a big chart. And you, how do you pull out what the important information is? Because in my past life, you would ask questions on all different courses. We wouldn't even know which course. Right. So you can't really, like, you can put up the screen, but who's going to even be able to see that at that level? So I think maybe maybe we need to communicate, try our best to make some, in the announcements of the meetings and things like that, that, um, you know, if you want to follow along, it's best to print out ahead of time yeah or have it on you know have it on your computer screen if you want right. to listen on your phone or something because it would be could we do it yes i just think people would be more frustrated like i can't see this what are they talking about you so, know you longitudinal data on charts that it's very hard to see so we are going to have copies of them available for yes. the public at the meeting as well the plan okay. was to have the hard copy reports okay. to post it on we wanted to get it out by friday so people had time to look at it right and um you know and to encourage people to look at that hard copy because it will be much easier to follow. And then we'll have hard copies for all of you. When you come in, we sit down, you can look at the hard copy. Great. You okay. Look on it on your laptop, but it would, it would be very difficult to do it the, the other way. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, I just don't want, I, I don't want you to think that you're going to be able to see something that we weren't planning on seeing it. No, that's thanks for clarifying. So yeah. are you, are you okay with that though? Let me, let me, yeah, I think yeah. The, the basis of my your answer is a little bit different, but it it, it 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 does go together. The the question, my original question was really along the lines of things that are on the projector, whether it was this presentation or future okay, presentations. Okay. Is it going to be you know like me holding up my you know my cell phone to here, right? You can hardly make it out. Right. If I could share my cell phone screen directly to us through Google Meets, you'd okay. see it perfectly. Right. So I think the the, the original question was if people do live stream and if there were a presentation up on the projector, it would be this lower quality camera looking at the, the projector screen. Right. What you're saying is in this particular case, because of the data yes. being presented, even if we had a live connection from the projector directly to the internet, the data doesn't present well in that mm -hmm. format. So regardless of what method okay. by which we're not going to present on the screen in this particular scenario, but yeah, I just wanted to make yeah okay. Yeah. I would labor it. I just wanted to make sure that I, no, that's I was okay. A confused, but just so she's prepared when she's discussing the statistics and and talking about all the results and things like that, um, it doesn't hurt to have a copy of it, uh, you know, up on the screen behind her so she can reference it. If people are kind of like, hold on, where are you seeing this? If so you can say over here on this column, if you take a look on your on your copy, on this page, this column down, or something along those lines. I don't know. I mean, presentation. I don't know either. Let's we're we're Think hoping about it. To, she's hoping to finish the report by Friday, so okay. we'll we'll take that into consideration when we look when we look yeah. at it, um, to see what these charts look like. I get what you're saying because yeah. usually what she would do, we would do is say on page five we have the you know we're trying right. to make right. sure because it is very. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And then if you put like a, a chart on one slide, then you put the chart on the next slide. Oh, well, what about that data? Then you got to go back to the other. It's, you know, it's kind of like three charts on a page. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll look at it. Okay. We'll, just so it, just for ease of presentation. Else, I'll let you know. Just want, I just want people, I want it to be, uh, for her presentation, I want it to be clear. I don't want people to be confused and exactly. So that's why I thought that yeah. might ease the presentation, but you guys can figure that out. You're all, yeah, you're all it's, yeah, because it's a very important presentation. It really is. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, um, you know, they want to hear this. Yep. Yep. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. So then just to kind of re just resummarize, we are in person in November, uh, people, uh, if they want to participate interactively, they want to offer public comment, uh, they have to come to the library, participate with us there. People who are going to watch from home, it'll be through YouTube. It'll be view only. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, are we ta are we taking public comment in writing uh, prior? Uh, As we have in the past. Yeah, I, I was confused. I know we did that when we were fully remote due to the restrictions, but 
what is the policy if we are in person and you want to make public comment are do you uh, I, I personally think david honestly they we've had so much pushback not so much but we've had pushback about being in person and i think if people really want to be heard and we're in person they can they can show up i mean i'm not trying to be difficult but at the same time you know, either we're going to be online. I don't want people to start submitting, um, you know, comments and then basically just submitting them and not showing up. Like, come, if you want an in-person meeting, let's have in-person meetings and, and have your comment be heard and happy to have your comment be heard. But I think we have to do one or the other. Either you, the written thing, that was part of COVID. And I think that that's, it, it was, it was hard. It was written in someone else. It was written and read in someone else's voice. I'm not trying to cut off communication by any stretch of the imagination, but I just, I just didn't find it to be an effective means of communicating comments. Not, a, I mean, it's all we had at the time. That's my thought. What do you think? I mean, my, my the basis of my question is just what have we done in the past? So uh, before we wound up in the high, in the remote because of COVID, when we were in person only. Mm -hmm. uh, which actually predates me being on the board. I joined the board during COVID. So I think you too, Sharon. I so, did, right. I did, but I used to attend the board yeah, meeting. You had to show up. You, yeah. you made your comment, you had to be there. Yeah, that's okay. how it worked before. Okay. Yeah, so. that then I, okay. Just, you know, it basically, if that's what we are gonna require, I just wanna be able to say, this is how it was prior. And yeah. so we're basically taking that, you know, we, the hybrid model that we're using of either remote or in person and we're applying the set of rules to how it was previously. So if we were in person and you wanted to make a public comment, we invite you, we'd love to hear from you, but you have to yes. do it in person. Yeah. If you want to send a public comment in to be uh, read, then that will be uh, held or done at one of our uh, remote meetings, but public we, comment. Okay. But well, we don't even, we don't even do the red comments at the remote meetings anymore. That's one of the reasons why we're oh, that's right. on Zoom. That's right. I that's right. I lobby that we get. That's right. Okay. See. Yeah. So they have. There. We'll give them opportunities, right. either via Zoom or live, okay. whatever the format of the meeting is. They can come and give us their comment. Okay. That's right. And that was one of the big pushes to move to Zoom, so that when people want to make public comment, we could remote. We would elevate them to a speaker. We'd be able to yes. see their face, have their words re uh, read by themselves. Right. 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 I think it's more effective that way yeah. too. So anyway, all right. <clears throat> so I believe that is it, unless anybody has any other new business. All right, then in that case, we will, I guess, when is our uh, live in-person meeting? 14th. The 14th, all right. So hopefully we see lots of people in the library on the 14th, and can I get a motion to adjourn? I so move. All right, thank <laughs> you. All right. Here we, here we go, Dan, feel better. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> All, right, All right, bye guys. Everyone.